On his 53rd birthday, he walked in here, asked what she wanted for the place. She named a price. He said, OK. And we never took an audit. We never checked the inventory. We never verified the receivables. We never checked uh, the titles to the, the real estate to see whether they were really owned or anything else, because she just uh, she gave me her word. And I gave her the $55 million. And when you got Mrs. B's word, you've got something like a document from the Bank of England. Uh, when we made the deal, which, which was done almost instantaneously, it happened to be my birthday, uh, uh, August 30th, and I didn't tell her that till after we shook hands, and I, when I told her it was my birthday, she said, well, she said, Mr. Buffett, she always calls me that, I don't know, but she says, she says you bought an oil well on your birthday. <laughs> Price, $55 million. If I could start a business, and I had first draft pick, like in the NFL, of the 25 top graduates, of, of the top business schools in the country and the 25 picks from the top CEOs of the Fortune 500, or I could take Mrs. B to run the business, I'd take Mrs. B. There aren't any other Mrs. Bs. You know, I had a woman that couldn't read or write that came to this country and put, finally put $2,500 into a business and became the largest home furnishing store in the country. And uh, you know, I, she worked till she was 103. Mrs. B is incapable of operating at less than 100%. I mean, she, she has she has no low gear or no medium gear. She's got high gear, and she is in it all the time. It's the largest home furnishing store in the world. In Omaha, which only has a SMSA of 650,000 people, it's on 72 acres. That business comes about, or has resulted, from an investment of $500 in 1937 by a woman who walked out of Russia in 1921. She landed, she walked out, got on a peanut boat, landed in Seattle with a tag around her neck. She couldn't speak one word of English. The American Red Cross looked at the tag, it said Fort Dodge, Iowa. They got her to Fort Dodge, Iowa. She couldn't pick up the language. She was there two years. She said she felt like a dummy. So she came to Alma because there were other Russian Jews there and she'd at least have somebody to talk to. Her little girl started school, Francis. Francis would come home at night and teach her mother the words she learned in school that day. That's how this woman, Rose Blumpkin, learned the English language. She brought seven siblings over from Russia, one at a time, 50 bucks. Every time she saved 50 bucks, she sold used clothing and other works. She got her seven siblings over, her mother and father. And by 1937, 16 years after she got here, she saved $500. She got on a train, went to Chicago, to the American Furniture Mart, which was this huge, impressive thing. She had this, she was smart as hell, but she thought like a peasant in a way. And she saw this building and she decided to name her company the Nebraska Furniture Mart. She went in and bought $500 worth of, uh, she bought about $2,000 worth of uh, merchandise. All the way back to Omaha, she worried because she thought, I owe $1,500 and she only had a $500 equity. So she got to Omaha. She took the bed, the sofa, the refrigerator out of her own home to sell fast so she could get the money so she could pay on time. She took that business and built it from that start. No one would sell to her. She went into court four times because they tried to, the carpet manufacturers tried to keep her from selling at a discount. And she went into court and told the judge she figured out ways to buy this stuff in various nefarious ways from other had other people buy it for her. and she said look at i pay three dollars a yard for this carpet brandeis sells it for 6.98 she says i sell it for 3.98 just tell me judge how much you want me to rob people she defended herself papers wrote it up the judge bought carpet from her the next day i mean it was it was marvelous <laughs> brandeis isn't selling anymore they were the huge department store in Omaha. she put everybody out of business and the punchline she worked till she was 103. she sold me the business when she was 89 and she didn't, have, she didn't have an audit. I went out to see her uh, one afternoon. I took a check out with me and I, and because I knew she wanted to do something. And I said, Mrs. B, here's the money. I said, I don't need an audit. Just tell me whether you owe any money. She said, I've never owed any money since I owed those guys back in 1937. And she said, it's all free and clear. She'd never seen a balance sheet. She didn't know what accounting terms meant, but she understood the nature of the business. And I told her, I said, I'd rather have, I'd rather have your word you know, than an audit from every one of the big six or big eight or whatever there were the number at the time of the top auditing firms. And, and she worked till she was 103. She died at 104. 
She had three siblings at her funeral. I mean, those are some genes. Her son works there now. He's 82 or three, and the three sisters are all alive. But the punchline is she couldn't read or write. This woman could not read or write. If you told her this room was 68 feet by 43, she would tell you how many square yards it was like that. She never went to school a day in her life. Something that they'll remember for a long time. I hope till the next birthday they'll still remember the bugs. Even though Mrs. B no longer owns the store, she still puts in over 70 hours a week, working all seven days and three nights. And vacation is a dirty word. Do you have any advice to somebody who would want it, who wants to start their own business? Honey, how can you give an advice? Anybody. I got 640 people working in the store. Some of them don't know how to figure two and two is. They have to have the computer. You can't give advice. Everything is in you. God bless me. I had a talent. Anything I done, I made money.